Today on the Justice Court, the plaintiff, Priscilla Bello, is asking the court to compel her husband, Emmanuel Bello, to be fully responsible for the upkeep of their children. All right. Court in session. Honorable Judge Fumi Asaolu presiding. Please be seated. The Honor, this case is between Priscilla Oju, um, Bilu, sorry, and Emmanuel Bilu. That is why. Thank you, Aki. You're welcome. Priscilla. Yes. You are the one that brought Emmanuel to the court. Yes. So what happened? We are married. He's my husband. When did you get married? We got married 2005. Okay. How many children do you have? We have four children together. I have one son before we got married. So we okay, adopted, five making children. five children, all bearing his name. Pardon? All bearing his name, his son's name. Okay. So from the beginning of the marriage, we've always had issues, third parties issue, you know, keep having issues like that. And then financially, again, we used to have issues in terms of upkeep, feeding, and other things. These issues have been continued like that for long. But what actually brought me here is because of the upkeep of the ch children. We keep having issues and we agree that he just he doesn't want the marriage again. He sent for my family that should call my family to come and his family. Then he told them he wanted British peace from the marriage that he's no longer interested in. When was that? That was 2019. Okay. So you've been separated for two years now? Mm, more than two. No, three years. 2019. 2019. 2020, 2021. This is the third year. Mm. Yeah. So he said he doesn't want the, he wanted written peace. So when he, the uncle asked him what happened, he narrated and he asked me, I narrated. And the uncle said, his uncle said, it's not enough reason for separation if he only wants me to be cautioned. He said, no, that he doesn't have any atom of love for me. Again, that we should part our ways. They will not ask about the upkeep of the children. He said he wants to take the children to the village to stay with his mother, that already the rent is due. He's not going to renew the rent. Then I should find my way. And then I said, no, that I cannot allow my children to go and stay with your mother in the village. So. It became an issue. Everybody were trying to resolve it. So the uncle told him that even if you don't want the marriage, you still have to take care of the children. Let the children stay. You take care of them. He said, let him think about it. So the meeting ended that day. Since then... When was that meeting? That same... When was November, the meeting? That was no, October 2019. Okay. That was when this meeting held, October 2019. So after the meeting, he carried his bag and left. He didn't come back home. Throughout that period, he doesn't come. I just stayed with the children. Then the landlord called me and said, he said we should leave the house, that he's no longer staying in the house and he's not going to renew the rent. I went to the church. I called the uncle and said, see what he has told the landlord. He, only, he was one that said he's going to think about the upkeep. Now, the landlord is asking us to leave. So after some time, the landlord stopped disturbing us, and we stayed January, February, before the end SARS, um, the COVID-19 started. He was not at home, so I was just managed with the children in the house. So after the COVID-19, then the landlord called me again and told me that Mr. Bella have called him to tell him he's no longer going to renew the rent, that I should leave. I should not wait till when the rent elapsed and they will start having issues. That since a man can ask if, uh, this family to leave the house, then what am I doing there? That is no longer interested in the marriage. I didn't move out. I stayed till September. The landlord kept disturbing. And on that day of the meeting, he also gave condition that if the children will stay with my mom, it's okay. He will take care of them from there. So my daughter and I decided that, suggested that why not let's go to my mom's place. My mom stays at Ogun State, Agbara, that why not let's go to mom's place? Maybe daddy will be 
taking care of us from there. So we now agree so that the landlord do not throw our things out. I took the children to Ogun State, August 2020, to stay with my mom. We all stayed there. Until I got a job at Lekki to go and be an assistant consumer for movie people. So I went there, then he called me in September and asked me about the children. I said they are with my mom. He said, where am I? I said, I'm at work, I'm at Lekki. Then school have resumed. He said, the school have resumed. I said, yes, but I don't know what to do. You ask the landlord to send, take, send us out of the house, so I don't know. The school has resumed. The children cannot be coming from Ogu State to Ibuilini. I don't know what is your plan. He off the phone. He didn't say anything. And then I left the job, went back home, and then called him again in presence of the children, asking him what is his plan. Should the children return back? Should we come back home? Are you going to renew the rent? So my daughter asked him. He said, since they want to stay with me, that he's not going to cater for their upkeep. Okay, should we come back home? He did not say yes. He did not say no. My mommy tried to talk. He said he doesn't want to insult an old man. Then he caught the call. And that was how that discussion ended there. And then I started staying with my children there. Because my daughter was to prepare for Wayek. So I have to look for a school there for her to register so that whatever is happening will not affect our Wayek. Then I registered her in the school. So because I, they, they are four. So for them to give me this count, I registered all of them at the same time. Since he's not saying anything, I said, if they are going to stay with me, not, no respond. I just took it up and I said that this student's school should not be affected. And then they started schooling there. Well, suddenly the school, previous school now called me that he paid some money. That uh, this, um, why the children not, have not, why have they not resumed? I said, ah that we have discussed this thing and I've asked him, it's not a matter of paying the rent and the school fees. What about the, where the children will stay? And his own plan is to take these children to village. He might just be looking for a little, a little opportunity where he will just come and take the children in my absence and travel to the north because he's from Adamawa State. So I don't know until I'm sure that he's going to pay for the rent before the children can come back. And moreover, now I've already paid for my daughter to write to her here because time is going. And so that was how we ended in 2019, 2020. He did not call, he did not send, he had, doesn't even call the children to know how they are doing. In November 2020, I went to him to still go and make peace with him. I went to him, I pleaded with him, I said, whatever that it is between us, please, let bygone be bygone. Let's, you know, let's, because of these children, let's there be a way forward. We talked to Atlanta, we cried, I even, we even played, I thought maybe he has forgiven. Then we left. I left that night. I left his place around 11. He said he's going to call us. He did not call that year. He didn't call. December, he didn't call. If we call him, he said he's busy, and he didn't call. And so this now prompts me to like say, oh, will I continue? Will this children keep off if I don't have it to send them to school or feed them? So that was why I decided to bring the matter here. Even as I this week, I went to the school. The school have resumed. But my children have not resumed school because they are holding a standing debt. And then this current one, then the only school proprietor called, proprietors called me. I went to see her. And I told her, I said, see, I'm even going to the courts with their dad. Maybe you should call him. He will respond because they've already served, informed him about this court. And then the woman called him right there. He said, he will never pay school fees for them. Even that since I've taken him to court, even if they are going to take him to firing squad, he's ready to face firing squad. He can waste the money outside rather than spending it on the children. And I told him, I said, if you correspond and agree to, be, to pay their school fees, fine, maybe one will come to the court. If he's going to take care of school fees, I can bear other things. But the response he gave, even my daughter that was there, was she felt bad that that is not even consider if you are even hearing what he was saying. And so that is how we have the whole matter is to know. The plaintiff, Priscilla Bello, claims that her marriage has been turbulent for several years due to third-party interference and inability of her husband to provide upkeep. She stated that her husband declared that he is no longer interested in the marriage. She is seeking the court's intervention on the upkeep for the children. 
happened? The part she gave, from my own verdict, my take, when we started, we met while I was running a program, computer program. And the first thing, we became friends. And there was a day I got to the school and she was crying that she could not pay the son's school fees. Then he was still in nursery. I felt, okay, fine, this person has care for kids. So we got along and somehow that was how our relationship started. So I started catering for the boy and had him in school until he was in 100 level. Now, when we were dating, he complained of his first marriage with the dad, that it was too violent, that the guy was always fighting and beating, and I believed her completely. Along the line, she moved into, I was staying in the barracks then, and it got to a point, each week will always have crisis. She's temperamental, she's always, she gets angry at the slightest provocation. If she's angry, she gets angry. If anything comes up, she gets angry. And because of that, she will always look for something to vent out her anger on. And I don't like anything violent. So for me, it's to leave. Now, that will not warrant her allowing me. Before you know, she grieves and then she starts reacting. And neighbors will gather. So we have gone all through the whole process in the barracks. They will always be fighting. So most times, everybody got fed up and wanted us to leave the barracks because I was in the barracks then with my dad. The thing became so serious that they all wanted us to leave. There was a period where we had a quarrel. The younger sister was with us then, and she was to go to a church. She attends one of these churches. So I gave her transport that she asked for. She came up and started venting and ranting that uh, I was dating the, 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 the sister. She burnt the sister's clothes outside. And I felt bad because she said I was taking advantage of the sister to which She's even the first person I've ever dated, I've ever had anything to do with. So when she was ranting all those ones, you know, neighbors got pissed off about the whole thing, and they all vehemently wanted us to leave the barracks. So, but unfortunately for them, I had somebody that I knew, a senior ranking officer, that allowed us to stay. Now it continued and continued until we left the barracks. I told the man that living there while you're still here will not last. You might leave the military someday, and it will be difficult. I'm not a military personnel. I left and then we got a, a two bedroom outside. It was still the same thing. Now the, the issue we had was that, okay, we need to sweep the compound. She complained and complained. I agreed to be sweeping on behalf of the, the compound because they said others felt they could not pay. And, and I was doing that. Now the landlord kept on having issues. She kept on having issues with the landlord. They would give us quick notice. And if I plead, the landlord would like put a bill on me. Either I'll pay 20,000 naira or 15,000 naira that he had asked the lawyer to write. And so he would not be the one to pay the lawyer. So I had to pay. So those things were on and on. And it got to a point. Then we were not wedded. But the, the quarrel and the fighting kept on coming. And each time that happens, it's usually because she's upset over one thing or the other. Now, there was a period we had a little girl that she brought from her area. She gave this girl a hell of a beating that she ended up using pepper and other things on her. And I told her, I said, you cannot do that because this is another person's daughter. And okay, if this girl is not going to sleep in this house, your son will not sleep in the house too. Let him stay outside and get to feel those things. No, but she kept on, you know, rant. this thing will go on and on. The landlord got fed up and gave us quick notice. We left that place and moved to another place. The same problem we're having with the landlord because she's temperamental. They gave us another quick notice. We came to this place that we were. It was still on and on. Now, her kind of lifestyle is something I tried to manage. She is social and she enjoys flexing about. And for me, I feel it's not worth it for a family person. I was so pissed off when my little girl, the one that is, she was celebrating her fifth birthday. I was telling me to celebrate her birthday at a club. And I felt, no, it shouldn't even get to that level. So she kept on, you know, having that kind of lifestyle. And... Each time she complains, I, and I, I feel, okay, fine, you're taking advantage of the fact that, okay, because I won't talk. Now, she runs a salon that she wanted, that that's what she could do when we moved out of the barracks. I was, because I, I teach and I run private lessons, so I was able to gather some amount, and I opened the shop for her. Now, I equipped the shop, but most times she'll be there 11, 12, till almost midnight. That, that's when she, the customer <coughs> for me. And I've complained and complained, but it wasn't working. 
Now, within that period, she and one other guy was having, I don't know if they were, but they were always together. The wife too complained. Now, these are people that are still there, and I just wish they were here. Now, they, the, guy, the, the, the wife too complained, and I felt, okay, since you said it's a friend, this fighting, whatever it would take for us to have peace, let me just allow it be. Only for her one day to come in. Now they traveled for like almost an hour trip. She came back and told me that the guy took her to one other place. I wanted to take advantage of her. Now I said, let me confront the guy. He said no to avoid problem. And I kept cool. Now we've been having this issue on and until we moved to our current place. It's a three bedroom apartment. Now, this other one came up because she was having, there's a church member that was flaunting money about Mr. Matthew. So, in fact, it's even a known fact in our parish, in my parish where I worship. My priest is aware of this. Now, she kept on on this, that this guy gave her money to open a shop because she wanted another place. I said, give me time. I, I'm a salary earner. If you're relocating to another shop, I need time to put myself together. We had a slight argument on it and... She got pissed off about it. But I later got to know when issues came up. I never knew that the guy gave him, the brother, so to say, gave him money, to op gave her money to open the shop. Now, the relationship with the guy kept on, on and on and on and on, until the guy got pissed off with the whole thing. And the home is broken because the, the guy left the marriage. The guy left the marriage because of the issue. Now, this thing kept on and on and on. And before then, the, 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 the violence was becoming too obvious. There was a period she was to celebrate her birthday, the, and we all felt the guy was the one sponsoring because he was to celebrate it at a club, flex club, uh, bar so. And I allowed it flow, but she did something that pissed me off because she woke my daughter, the senior one, at about 12, to come and be baking, turning this uh, uh, bed, uh, uh, cake that she wants to bake. And I said, it won't work. I got so annoyed and I picked the plastic. We stay at the second floor. It's a, a two-story building. And I flung the thing outside. Now I was heading for the cake to destroy the, 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 the eggs. Sorry. Then she held a knife. And if not my elder sister that was there, I knew I would have confronted her. Anything would have happened. Now at that point, I knew that if we continue, anything could happen. That was at those periods when we were, where we are now. That was when I left the house. And I was staying with a friend. Only for one day, I just got back there because at times I do go to the house, breeze in, and I leave. I got there, they said they left by September or so. Why? That uh, the landlord said they should leave since I said I wasn't paying. And I said the rent wasn't even due. Even if you're leaving, at least my rent is due in November. And you don't have rights to just take the kids out. Now, for the, I am a Catholic, so for such a family where there's violence, it allows us to stay apart and let me have my clear head. Now, the reason is when we keep on having issues, I went to our godparents. Now, for two occasions, I got there, he stays in Festa, I go back to the house and she wouldn't allow me in. I was outside till 2 a.m. and she, that's when she will allow me. Twice, even, yes, like twice I could recall, I'd slept outside on the staircase. She wouldn't allow me in, that I came in late to the house. So I slept outside. Your house? Yes, the house. And she would stay inside. More than twice I slept outside. But I tried not to make issues about the whole thing. It was becoming so obvious. To the point that even while we left the barracks, we were thinking, okay, because we're not wedded in the church, probably that's why we're having crisis. My elder brother said that jokingly. And I felt, okay, probably that's the reason. And we did, we went for the wedding. On our way back, we had Corel. So it, it, it was something that I felt it's not something I could manage. For what, she, she started complaining and nagging while we were driving home that the ring wasn't her side. I, don't, I said, yes, even if it wasn't, it's something we could always get. This was even a gift. Uh, a family member friend took me to one of these uh, jewelry shops and got it. And now since it's a gift, I selected it, I know, but we we'll still get she complained and complained and complained. She alighted on the way, went to her friend. I got pissed off myself. I just got to my And then I started having my, realized when we're supposed to be having honeymoon. But it was something that pissed me off completely. So I just knew that there's, it's her temperament that I cannot manage. Now, when they called me for this particular uh, court case, she called again and 
her, the way her tune is, is usually like a provocative call, not intending to, just wanting to get somebody. And I told her, I said, you won't get into my head again. Whatever you want to do, you do. Now, in the first place, you took these kids to where you chose to. Because before the, the that's 2019, the school, where my, the school my kids attend, they called and said they are resuming and said their bill is about 220, 70,000. I said, okay, it's, let me send 100,000 this week. By the end of the month, I'll offset the bill since they are all in a entrance classes and wife class. But when I now called that she had taken them, I said, why would you, if you feel you want to go ahead, fine. But if you have your own issues and you feel you want to rub it off on the kids, do whatever you want to, but I think it's just unfair. Because I know the reason why she had that, it's, she's finding it difficult to stay within that vicinity because of the issue she had. Now, she is not even part of the Christian mother any longer. Because the whole issue is even known. And it got to a point, initially, I was finding it difficult to even work in the community. Because by the time you pass two, three people, and then they put her together, and then they giggle something, of course, you will anticipate that. Uh -huh, this is the man that uh, the wife, but I, I just don't let it get into my head. And I just kept on. And that's even what gave me courage to stay. Because I felt moving from one point to the other, we were not making any headway. Rather than that, I was incurring more debt because each time we relocate, I need to pay agent an agreement of over 100000 When we moved to this current site, I spent over half a million on that particular place. Now, it was sometimes in November. Now, that same year, it was so, so grievous that my sister had to come in to settle fight when I finished paying bill in, December, in November. So when they called on this, I said, no, I wasn't, I, for one, I'm not part of my kids even staying outside in the first place. I stay in a three-bedroom apartment. Now, if you feel you want, then that means you have what it takes to take them. It has never, and each morning I wake up, the only hope is that one day I know they will still get back because there is no justification and no moral backing for was the last I want time to you go saw stay for them there. The defendant, Emmanuel Bello, claims that his wife is violent and very unruly. He said his wife was involved in a relationship with other men. One of the relationships eventually led to the breakup in the man's marriage. He said they have had to change accommodation a few times due to his wife's behavior to the landlord and neighbors. He claims that on an occasion, his wife got so angry that she grabbed a knife to attack him, but the timely intervention of his elder sister prevented a bad day. After this occasion, he decided to be separated and moved out of the house. Judge for me wades into this matter. When was the last time you saw your children? Apart from today. Oh, they are in court now. Yes, they are. Okay. Apart from today. Apart from today. Apart from today, I think uh, sometimes. Uh, I think that's 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 that should be twenty nineteen. That should be twenty nineteen. Don't you miss them? But no, I do. I do. At times they've come to the house. But one thing that happens is that. She brought them, to, I think the other two girls, they come to the house when I'm not around to pack their things. Two, three times she had done that to carry their things. And because I leave the house early and I get back. Now, where they stay is the, uh, that place at uh, Aguara there. Now, yes, the place has really changed. I was there some time ago, but I really couldn't locate it. Mm. Yes, I couldn't really locate the place because the place has changed. Twice I was within that area. Why didn't you call her? Her line. Yeah, to I told your, her, I said to I was... To meet yes, your I, children. This time around, it's not about you, Anna. It's about your children. Yes. I told her, I said, your line is something that gives me bad memory. If she has another call, that, when, they, when they called the first time, I picked the call. When uh, my girl used another line to call me, I picked the call. Now, but her take was that, because she's with the kid, I must come there and beg her to bring the kids back to their house. You see, um, you have right of access to the children. The age determines who has custody, but there's no law that would debar one of the parents from having access to the children. It's not possible. And somehow I feel you didn't make enough move towards seeing those children. Look, the two of you have issues. Don't let it translate onto the children. These are your children. I didn't know your biological children. Yeah, yeah. So why will you let it extend to them? It's not their fault that you brought them into the world, the two of you. 
So you can't just throw them under the bus just like that. That's one. Then um, there is an area that is not clear to me. You claim you paid, you paid, you pay school fees for the old school at the old school. Yes. Then you move them to another school and pay there. No, you didn't pay. You, you, mm. you move them to another school. Yes. Because you had to leave where you were living before. Yes. When the landlord asked you to leave, did you tell him? We called him. All what he's saying is he's just mixing them up. If I didn't want to dig deep to what he said. That's what I just said. My reason for coming is actually the children. Okay, we we'll leave it that so, way. Wait. No, you ask if why I defied the call. We called him, asking him that. See, the landlord said we should move out. He said he's not paying for the rent. I called his uncle, the one that was with that was in the meeting that day. That one said he's going to talk to him. I still reported the case to the priest. The priest said that, that each time he called him to sit with me to talk, he refused to say anything. If I'm not there, he will talk. But when I'm there, he will not want to talk. So he wouldn't believe what he's saying against me. So that's why he, since he's feeling really stubborn, he doesn't know how to handle the matter. He's, he's aware. We moved, I, I moved my children from there to my mom's place. You said so, I understand. But you my things were still there till November. I still comes to the house to stay. Even when he was, when he came back, I was asking him, are you renewing the rent for us to come back? He did not say yes, he did not say no. This matter is unfolding as Judge Fumi cross-examines both parties. The case continues next week. Have you been cheated or have a dispute and want justice? Don't take laws into your hands. Log on to www.thejusticecourt.com and submit your case.